G'day, Stu here from UAV Futures, and today, well, this one is a big one. This is the Wizard X220S, the new one from Eshane, and I am so pumped to finally get my hands on it. Last year, I gave the original Wizard, this is the X220 right here, I gave this one my Drone of the Year award. So is this one gonna live up to the hype? And I've gotta tell you, I'm feeling pretty confident. Now, I don't know if it's gonna be my drone of the year. We're gonna stick it on the bench and break it down and have a bit of a look. But I think for anybody wanting to get into the hobby or just have like a backup quadcopter, that is awesome out of the box with some really good kit at an unbelievable price. I think, you know, a wizard is definitely a step in the right direction. So, what we're gonna do in this review, we're gonna stick it on the bench, break it down, have a look at it. I've got the kit that comes with like a radio. There is a bind and fly kit as well. I'll drop everything in the descriptions, all the links down below if you wanna check them out. But yeah, so what we'll do, we'll have a look at it. Then uh, in part two, we'll take it out, fly it around and see just how it goes. And will this, is this a perfect beginner drone and will this live up to sort of drone of the year 2017? Anyway, enough rambling from me. Let's stick it on the bench and get started. Alrighty, so here's everything on the bench and you can see most of this review is going to be about the Wizard X220S itself. But because I've got the ready to fly kit, everything you need to get set up ready and rock and rolling, we'll have a look at some of the other components that this one comes with as well. And uh, everything will be linked down below. And if you just added a pair of goggles like these 007 Pros, you're ready to rock and roll. So very quickly, let's get the boring stuff out of the way. Now you do get your radio, it's set up, it's just like the IS-6, pretty much a uh, pretty standard, pretty cheap radio, but honestly not too bad and you can't complain. Something I was very, very happy with when you get the Wizard, because it is 4S compatible and 4S is where it's at, uh, you do get this little battery balance charger, which honestly, I wish I could just buy some of these. I've been looking for a simple charger like that, so that's gonna be awesome. One of my favorite things about the actual battery you're supplied, it's a 1,500 milliamp hour uh, and a high 75C battery. Now we're gonna have to test that battery rating, but I definitely think 1,500 milliamp or 1.5 uh, amp hours is a great size because it's a great compromise. You've got plenty of amps you can suck down and uh, you're gonna have some good flight times without being too heavy. And you also need a decent battery because honestly, this thing is gonna absolutely rip when you push down the throttle. Now you do get some other little boring parts like some zip ties and spanners and little foam parts, but who really cares about those? You get an absolute ton of props and we will talk about the props in detail as well, but let's have a look at the goods. Oh, and you also get this GoPro holder, which I'll show you how this looks. I'll flash some pictures up on the screen. Let's have a look at the good stuff right here. Now we're gonna start at the outside in, but the first thing I wanna do, let's stick it on the scale. So you can see this is made to spin five inch propellers. Uh, it is definitely a full on serious racing drone. I'm going to stick it on the scales. Take your bets. How much does your race away? How much is this one going to weigh? I'm going to guess it's coming in at 360, 370. Ah, oh, and I swear I haven't weighed that before. So 360, 370 grams there. Pretty decent size for a racer. Look, it is not the absolute lightest, but it's also not the heaviest as well. And I don't think it needs to be the lightest because this is aimed at beginners. This is just aimed at people who want an awesome quadcopter. And usually the lighter you go, the more breakable things actually become. So I think this thing is gonna be very, very robust, very solid design. It hasn't changed too much. I'm gonna take these props off actually. It hasn't changed too much from the original wizard design in terms of the frame. So here's the old wizard right here. You can see that pretty much the layout is very, very similar. There's some, been some slight modifications. So if you flip it over, you can see that uh, there is some different little cutouts and those sorts of things, but the overall design of the frame is almost exactly the same. And I really don't think that that's a bad thing, like because this thing is really robust, but what has changed is the awesome electronics in this one. So look, my 2016 Drone of the Year Award Wizard, it was amazing value for price, but there was some things that I wanted to change. And honestly, I am so happy with what they've done with the new 220S, that's a mouthful to say. Now it's called the 220 because it is 220 millimeters from motor to motor diagonally across. Uh, you've got some different plates here. It does have separate arms, which I think is okay for a beginner frame. So it means if you break one, it should be very cheap to replace it. Uh, and the important thing about the arms, they're actually coming in, if I can see if I can get this on there, at four millimeters thick. So you're gonna have no worries, uh, you know, in a crash, this thing is gonna hold up. It feels very, very rigid. And I think uh, this thing is designed for beginners or just designed for people who want a quad that performs really, really well, but they also don't have to worry about it breaking every time they crash. Now I guess what we're gonna do, let's have a look at the components because that's really for the price where this thing absolutely excels. So we're gonna start at the outside, work our way in and have a look at everything that makes uh, the Wizard 2, the X220S very, very special. So of course, 
Nothing changed right here on the outside. We've got these little motor protectors. That's great because I think if you're a beginner, you don't want to really be replacing motors. So when a hard crash, it does add some weight, but it is going to be protecting your motors, which is fantastic. And underneath there, you have some little LEDs, which is going to make this thing look absolutely awesome when we're uh, chasing it around in the field. And I'll be able to show you some flight footage of this thing in the part two of the review. Uh, and then on top, we've got a bit of our first major upgrade. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we're going to have a look at these motors. Alrighty, so we've zoomed in. I don't know. I'm going to flash some pictures on the screen anyway in case this is, isn't in focus but on the outside right here you know sticking with the same sort of purple theme because that seems to be common with the wizard but uh on the old one these are still 2300 kv so look a pretty good size a pretty good uh kv for a 4s battery these are a 2206 motor which means they're a little bit more powerful so in our original one we had 2205s but uh, this one, this is our 2205s in the old wizard. In this one right here, in the new version, in the uh, S version, we've got the 2206s. And what that means is the taller stator in the motor, it should be able to spin a little bit of a heavier prop. And that's exactly what it's doing. So we have some of these bad boys right here. Now these are the 5050 ones. These are pretty much a direct clone of the race Clark, Racecraft props. And uh, racecraft props, in my opinion, are super, super powerful. They really chew the battery, which is okay because we definitely get this thing with a powerful battery anyway. But these offer a ton of thrust. In a straight line, these are dead set racing props. And I know a lot of professional pilots who fly around with these. So good choice there. And speaking of the props, you get so many. Honestly, you get like, uh, let's see how many. I think you get 20. I think when you buy these, I think you get 20. Yes, you do get 20 of these props. So uh, honestly, that's a big difference. From That's something that makes a big difference. A lot of the quads that I get, they don't have that many props. So they might come with one spare set of props, which is annoying because as soon as you break them, you're going to be out of flying. But with this thing, at least if you buy one of these wizards, you do get a bit of a backup. So you should be flying for a long time. Now, moving inwards, you can see this is where there's another difference with the upgrade or this year's version. We've got some braiding on the arms to protect their wire. And that's because that's usually where the ESC was in the older version. You can see we've got the ESC strapped to the arm. But our ESCs in this one, oh, and I should also mention in the instructions, it says these motors can take 5S. Now, I'm unsure about that because honestly, 5S is pretty crazy. We're going to have to test it out. But uh, very interesting, if this can take a 5S battery, that is absolutely ridiculous. Now, getting back to the ESCs. So the ESCs in this one, instead of being on the arms, they're actually on the inside. It's a 30 amp D-shot ESC, can have a burst rating of 35 amps. And the crazy part as well, it says that to go to go go can go to 5S. So this might just be a 5S ready to roll, ready to fly quadcopter, which I think is absolutely crazy considering the price. Now, BOHL ES, I love that. It's very much the same sort of firmware and hardware that's on here. This is another Heli S ESC, but these ones are rated for more juice, bigger batteries, heavier props. So uh, these ones are going to be able to handle the loads that you're putting your cord through a lot better. Now, in order to show you guys, I guess, what's inside, what we need to do, well, let's take the top off and uh, have a bit of a look at what we've got going on in here. Alrighty, so I've just unscrewed the top right there and there you can see here is our stack. So here's everything ready to rock and roll. And I'm gonna take these side plates out as well, which is a nice little addition because uh, it means you're not going to be getting a whole bunch of grass and junk and it might help waterproof your quad when you're flying around. So, uh, and you do get this nice little part as well. This is a nice little USB cover, so a nice little touch so you don't get some grass in your USB. All right, now I'm going to have to show you some photos of this stack, but we'll try and go through these as well, just from the bottom all the way to the top. So on the bottom, we've just got our standard PDB. Nothing too special right there. Then we're moving up. We have our 4-in-1. That's where we spoke about our ESC. And then this is where we get to the good stuff. So right here, we have our Omnibus F4 flight controller. F4 is honestly better than what most of my quads are. Out of all my quads on my wall, I have one or two that are F4. Most of them are F3. So an F4 is just a more powerful processor in there. You've got space for a little SD card as well if you want to do some black box logging or anything like that. So honestly, this quad is fully kitted out in terms of its flight controller. On the top also, you've got your VTX. Very easy to change the channels and sort of go through all the cycles right there. All you're going to have to do is press a button and you should be ready to rock and roll and you're off to the races. Now, speaking of this VTX, something that is pretty cool. I was pretty impressed, actually. You get, if I can find it in this mess of all these props, you actually get one of these. So you can see it's got this little pigtail on the end. You get a Pagoda antenna. I was really blown away when I saw that this was in there. These are meant to offer fantastic reception, but a big problem about Pagoda antennas is how easily they break. But these guys have already thought of it. They've got a nice little cover on there. So that's simply gonna slide onto the, or screw onto the back, I should say. And I really think 
you're going to get some fantastic FPV reception when you're flying around with this. And then towards the front, one big complaint I had about the original Wizard was it was just a pretty dodgy, well, it wasn't dodgy, but it wasn't the best uh, camera you had in the front. This time, we actually have a proper, you know, a proper CCD camera, and that means these things are going to have some awesome dynamic range when you're looking into the light. You should have a fantastic picture when you're flying around. And honestly, these are the sort of quads, the components that people are putting together now in their premium proper races. Now, I guess what is pretty cool is they did a pretty good job matching the colors up. So uh, you have the LEDs there. Everything's looking purple. So if you care about blinging your quad out, this one definitely looks pretty awesome. You've got a big LED on the back, which I'm a big fan of, and that's a programmable LED. So you can sort of change what color you want this to be. I got, because I got the ready to fly version, that means mine came with the receiver already built in so i think that's a little a8s which should be great i am so blown away i think for the money that you're spending the components that you're actually getting in here are absolutely amazing which is pretty synonymous with the wizard as well because the original one honestly in my opinion that's why it got drone of the year not because it was the most power performance quad it was because for what you got it was absolutely amazing at how low the actual cost was and the, i sort of get the same feeling with this bad boy only this thing has some serious performance inside it, so I'm very, very happy. All right, now what I want to do, I'm going to show you guys the OSD so you can see exactly what we're talking about. So I'm just going to plug it in right here, and then, uh, oh, you can see here's where you sort of cycle through. I'm actually on channel 4, so if you did want to change your channel, all you got to do is press this little button right here. So now I'm on, uh, I know I'm on, this is the channel that I'm going to be flying on. And you can see we've got our big bright LED on the back. Let's plug it in and have a look at the OSD because I think that's a really important part as well. Alrighty, so here it is. Here's the OSD. And one thing I do want to point out, you get all this junk on your screen. Honestly, all we really need is the voltage and the timer. But because it's the Betaflight OSD, you can actually, this is done in real time on my computer. It's plugged in. I'm just going to turn off the, hori turn off the horizon, all those sidebars, all that sort of stuff. And you can also move some things around. So there we go. When I'm flying around, all I really want to know is my battery voltage and also my timer. So how long I've been flying for and how long my quad's done. That's it for an OSD because I know a big worry was when you're previously flying around with the Wizard was, you know, how are we going to come in and look after our batteries? So it's fantastic, you know, really good, powerful beta flight OSD in here. Alrighty, so with the OSD taken care of, there's really only a few little features. You know, we do get our awesome antenna that I've spoken about in the past, your Pagoda antenna. Put this on here, right here. This is your battery. You get two Velcro straps in this one, so a little bit of a difference. Although, I might be moving some of these around because that does make it a little bit difficult to change the channel. Not too hard. You know, and I rarely change the channel anyway, but, you know, you probably have to pull it apart or just move this to press one of those buttons. And then uh, all we do, put our battery on here. That's not going to be sliding anywhere. And I used to think, why is that so far back? But again, I really feel like the thinking over there at Ishina, or at least listening, because that's so you can strap your GoPro mount to the front Put your battery on just like this. You're ready to rock and roll. That's a full-fledged racer out of the box that is absolutely kick-ass, has some amazing components, and is ridiculously cheap. And it just, like, there's some really nice other little touches too, like things like the braiding of the ESCs. You've got some little marks here in the side. Look, I don't know if they're going to show up. I'll show you some pictures anyway. Got some little marks there on sort of what degrees are you going to have your FPV camera at? Uh, FPV camera at? And honestly, I'm... I'm a big fan, so uh, I'm going to be very interested to see what you guys think of the Wizard, because do you think this is a good buy? Drop it down in the comments below. What do you think? Would you have liked this as your first ever FPV quadcopter? Alrighty, so there it is. There's my part one review of the Wizard X220S, and is it my drone of the year? Well, I'm not 100% sure, because we still do need to take it out and fly it around, but on first impressions, I think you definitely can't go wrong. If you just want like a cheap backup second racer that's absolutely packed with performance, or maybe you just want to get a quad that works out of the box, you want to get into drone racing i really think this is a massive step in the right direction there's all i don't even know what i would improve on here like honestly it's super cool i love all the components the osd the f4 flight controller ccd camera you know upgraded props a pagoda antenna at a stupid cheap price like I think that this is definitely an awesome powerhouse, super cheap little quadcopter. Now stick around because we're definitely in part two. We'll take it out, rip it around, show you guys some flight footage as well because we do get that awesome GoPro mount that comes with it. I'll leave a link down below to like the bind and fly version and also the one that comes with the radio so it's ready to rock and roll. I'm not sure if it's going to be sold out because I know you guys always comment and say, Stuart, they're sold out. Can you please review something else that's not in stock? So I'm sorry if these aren't in stock or, you know, I'm not sure when they're going to be coming in. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Drop some comments down below. What 
what do you think about the wizard and you know let's do an experiment give this a thumbs up if this is better than your first racer and give it a thumbs down if your first race that you built was actually a little bit better than this one so uh, i'd love to know do a bit of a social experiment see how it goes but other than that subscribe for more fpv related content and as always happy flying Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos and i'm also going to leave a little link here to my patreon page because i've got some fantastic patreon supporters and i like to give back to them as well so if you want to join the uav futures family there's things like bonus velcro straps little bundles of fpv goodies and things like that that also get sent out anyway happy flying